Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel for episode 5 of Blundering Through Birthright. I decided to change the name because I figured blundering was a little bit more akin to what I'm actually doing. If this is your first time here, make sure you check out the playlist right there and linked down below so you know what's going on. And with that, let's get into the story. So for this episode, we had four players. We had Brindis, Roz, Valkyrie, and Jan. At the end of last session, we had a bunch of petitioners. The last petitioner we had was Bran from Freemensky, and he was like, I don't want to trade with the Ryuvikians because they're kind of jerks and we're like that's totally cool so then he brought us out to dinner which is also good because who doesn't like a free meal if you remember from the last session we were in the town that had all these seers around and so Renalfer, Brindis, and Val all got to find out what their doom is which is a thing for steward Vickians doesn't seem right Anyway, so Jan wasn't there at the time, but he's now here. He's feeling better. He was a little bit sick. Uh, so he went and he went to one of the seers and he found out what his doom was. And his doom is basically to always be followed by a raven. And he may be aided by this raven or he may be hindered by this raven, but this raven will always just kind of be in and out of his life. So I think it'll be really hilarious to see what terrible things happen as a result of this raven being there. But once we had settled up everything in town, we went in search of Olok the dragon, who was likely not a dragon, but a magic user probably, and we think that he's the one that's tapping the source in this province, so we kind of, you know, want to see what's going on, see if he is the one taking human sacrifices to keep this province safe. So like we go a little bit north and we find like this geyser and it's like shooting up like ice shards basically because once it gets in the air it's so cold and there's a hut right next to it. So like we go knock and Oleg is not happy to see visitors. He's like, listen, I get it. It's cold. You can stay here, but don't bother me. I'm trying to do the thing. But obviously we bother him. He's also got like this dragon mask on, which Roz is very interested in. Not because like he thinks it does magic or anything, but because he wants one. So we basically annoy the crap out of him and he won't feed us, which is like rude because we're guests that he didn't want. And so Valkyrie goes outside to go hunting and she finds a moose with like these silver antlers that can talk. And so she's like, come be my friend and turns out the moose knows Olok. So they're just like, oh yeah, hey, what's up? Uh, finally, we do take Olok's mask off. Turns out he's not a dragon underneath, obviously. Like we did make jokes about like there being a dragon body outside this hut and just like his head and neck coming through with just like cloaks hanging off of it so he looked like a person, but no, not actually a dragon. I ask him about the source and if he's the one kind of tapping it, he's like, listen, if you go to Otter's Cloud Forge and you find out if there's an actual dragon there and you come back and you let me know what you see, I'll give you secrets. I will tell you secrets. We'll do an exchange of information. So we're like, all right, cool, fine. So we stay the night, he leaves because he is so sick of our crap. And then we just spend the night there. It's getting really close to winter though, so we're not going to be able to get everything that we need to get done. So we need to prioritize. So we go to Isgur's Vanishing, which has an Orog base inside of our fence that we have, because we need to figure out what's going on there and hopefully deal with it before winter comes along because they could invade us at any time. So we get up to Isgur's Vanishing and we find a cave. It's a pretty wide cave and we decide to go in fairly slowly but obviously there's a trap and we weren't watching very carefully and Jan ends up in it. All is well though, it's not too bad of a trap. We make our way across. It doesn't have like spikes in the bottom, it's just a pit trap. And we get in and we keep going. And this is the Orog base, so there's a bunch of different rooms here and there and we need to clear them out. We decide that we did offer amnesty to some of the other Orogs who had defected. So we're like, you know, maybe these guys want to defect too. They didn't, but we do try offering a diplomatic means at first. It doesn't go so well and we get into a fight and we kill all the orgs in the first room. After we take care of them, we can hear some barking a little bit further down the way. So like we go down, we look around the corner and there's some orogs with some dogs. Dogs are like, they're so hard to beat up because they're so cute, but also they want to kill us. So we kill them and we kill the orogs and we keep going. We're also all kind of hurting at this point, but you know, 
we, we got stuff to do. We need to clear out these rugs because clearly they don't want to be our friends. In the first room though, we did find some tar and we have the ability to make flames. So we take one of those tar barrels and we bring it down with us and we go into the first room and it's just kind of like a larder. There's supplies, there, there's no bad guys, which is nice. So we block the door so they can't, nobody can come in to the next room that we're going to or come out of it. Like they will be trapped in there and we sneak our way over. Roz disguises his face to look like an orog and he like looks around the corner but obviously I don't look like an orog they know so they're like who's that over there? But then we throw the barrel of tar inside and like light it on fire and that causes a lot of problems and out of the five of them two are now on fire. It's a really rough battle. You've got Jan who is a rogue and Valkyrie who I finally figured out is a ranger and they're like our biggest fighters because other than that you've got Brindis who is a witch and Roz, who is a wizard. So our fighters go down pretty quickly, and so you're left with the witch and the wizard. But in all fairness, Brindis is a pretty powerful witch. Like, she can take fights, she can tank it, all that fun stuff. But it's just us. And so she throws herself in front of the squishy, squishy wizard, and between the two of us, we managed to take down the last of the Orogs, which was pretty boss. So we collect the gems from there, we check it out. There's no more Orogs left. The space is no longer an issue, at least for now. I mean, Orogs might come back and populate it, but at least at this particular moment, we know it's good. And now we need to start heading back to Hollinghomen because winter is coming. So when we get back to Hollinghomen, it is time to do a domain turn. And if you don't know what a domain turn is, it's basically a month of sit down time where you can do one huge action or you can just do four weeks of the regular stuff that you do on downtime weeks anyways. Brindis takes this time to kind of try to smooth things over with that province where Jan really made the Jarl mad um, and invests a blood point into there to kind of bring up the prestige of that province. Jan, meanwhile, is on his like head-to-head -head with Stormholzen, who's like his arch enemy, and he is trying to level up his holding before Stormholzen levels up his, because you can only have X amount of holdings at like level one or level two based on how big the province is. So Jan spends some of his regency points to block Stormholzen from leveling up his holding, but then Jan also wants to level up his holding, and I think he had like six regency points or whatever, um, and he just put them all into it, because I think it's like a DC 10 in order to level up your holding, so he put like six of his regency points in, or maybe it was 10, like, it was something stupid, like, where even if he crit failed, like, if he rolled a one, he would still level up his holding, like, it, it's just not worth failing. But then Storm Holton was like, mm, I have regency points, and so he used some of his regency points to make it harder for Jan to roll. And so with all that Regency points in there, Jan had to roll a five or over a five in order to level up his holding. And he rolled a six. So that was so close, but Jan has finally leveled up his holding to level one. And he is super stoked about that because he can now start like laying out trade lines and all that fun stuff. Because as a wizard, I don't have holdings yet. I'm only like a couple weeks into this. I just spent the entire four weeks making potions because I can make healing potions because I'm a wizard and I'm cool. So I made a ton of healing potions. I think I made something like 19 and I sold a bunch. And so now I'm no longer a poor wizard and it is so exciting. I actually have money to spend and do things. So that's like fantastic. I love it. By this point in the night, like in real life, it was getting really late, so we actually ended it before Val did her domain turn, so next episode we will pick that up and go through Val's domain turn and see what she spends her four weeks or one month doing. I know this was a short episode, but those, that battle with the Orogs took a very long time in actual gameplay, so it is a little bit shorter than usual, but make sure you do subscribe because there will be more episodes coming. I do tend to post every Sunday. So look forward to finding out what Val did and any other stupid adventures we get up to. With that, thanks for watching and I will see you next time.